Well, welcome to everyone. Today our guest is MMA fighter Adel Edwards. Thank you for joining. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Can you please uh, put on a brief uh, introduction about yourself? You know, a few basic stuff. How did you get into the world of MMA? So we're going to roll. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. And uh, I guess uh, not much to talk about myself, but I guess uh, in a nutshell, I'm a up-and-coming prospect right now i'm an eight and one professional uh, i've been fighting since i believe 2012 i uh originally got into martial arts with uh jiu-jitsu when i was like 14 years old and then i started wrestling i ended up wrestling through high school and through college but uh, my goal was always to get into mma that was my dream of something i always thought was really cool and i was very passionate about and immediately after uh, graduating college i took my first fight and uh, here I am, eight years later, still competing, still loving it, and um, hopefully uh, on the verge of being able to compete at the global level. Um, I'm eyeing, you know, the, the the next step up in competition, and you know, I've been training for a long time, and I think uh, things are looking looking good for me right now. When did you officially start MMA Voyage? Do you have a year when you officially started? My first fight was in 2000, fall 2012. I had been doing official MMA training for just that summer, maybe three months. And, uh, you know, this is something I knew I wanted to do. So it was good to hop in there and, uh, you know, prove it to myself. And that was, you know, I think 18 fights ago at this point after all my amateur and professional fights. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a long journey. Uh, considering you mentioned uh, BGG as your initial martial art, does it mean that your fighting style is more leaning towards grappling or you're comfortable everywhere? I think I'm pretty comfortable everywhere. Uh, at this point, I think, uh, you know, I, I like uh, jiu-jitsu and grappling is my first love for sure. I think that's my favorite. Um, and that always kind of it feels most fun to me to do, most effortless. But I like I like striking. It's something I'm putting a lot of time into and. It's uh, it's very exciting in its own regard and, and very fun. And uh, I'm, I think I'm at this point I'm I'm comfortable with MMA in general more than striking or grappling. I like MMA. Who are your coaches now, and uh, who are your sparring partners? Which is your dojo? Do you have some uh, travels for spars? And yeah, so I originally I started training in uh, oh, Columbus, Ohio, um, with Josh Williams and. Since then, I've moved to North Carolina, so we, we mostly communicate via phone. But uh, in North Carolina, uh, my main MMA coach is Marcus Davis. He's been helping me a lot, the Irish hand grenade. He's a fantastic coach, a lot of experience. And then um, I train out of 36 Chambers, Martial Arts and Fitness. And uh, it's run by uh, Josh Brackett. He's the Muay Thai coach over there, one of my main training partners. And there's honestly a lot of professionals in the area you know, around my level of experience. So I've got, a, a, honestly, a ton of great up-and-comers that you might not have heard of yet, but I think you will really soon. They'll be exploding on the next stage. As far as traveling, unfortunately, I'm not able to travel too much with my family. Uh, at this point, financially, it's tough, but like, let's get the VOC paychecks. I plan to take more trips, but I've been all over. I've been a, you know, a lot of the big gyms for, you know, week trips and, you know, mix up with some of those the better guys, more more recognized recognized names for sure. How about the Irish hand grenade? Everybody knows who's the guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. His reputation uh <laughs> is just pretty big. Well, if you follow this sport, there's no way you haven't heard of that guy. There's no way. I mean, if you follow the sport like me for twenty plus years, everybody knows about him. Yeah, he's a fantastic fighter, and honestly, he's a great coach. I think he's got a great mind for the sport, and. He's one of those guys where our philosophies and our styles really mesh together. It was kind of immediately uh, we clicked. So I I'm really grateful to have him in my corner. Well, you want to say that he is a guy with great calculation, uh, sorry, with great calculations during the fight, you know, and the great predictions, anticipations. And is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely. He's got a, a great mind for reading the opponents, uh, for anticipating what's going to happen in the fights. And not only in in the middle of the fight, not only is he a good guy to have, you know, you know, right on my side of the cage, but he's also a great guy to have in camp. He's really good at guiding my training and helping me and, you know, a lot of experience. He's been in it forever and a lot of the problems I'm running into, he's ran into before. So he's able to give me quick fixes so I don't have to learn it 
quite the the hard way, which is very very nice. Uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, Sunshine. They call me Sunshine. Yeah, that's a great nickname. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> fun nickname. I assume uh, I assume it has something to do with behavior or. Yeah, I think uh, you know I've got a sunny disposition. I suppose <laughs> I love fighting and I enjoy it and I enjoy training, and I think people uh, notice that really early. And uh, my wife gave me that nickname, and yeah, I think everybody across the board can agree it fit really well. Oh, yeah, it's a very very fun nickname. Uh, so uh, can we discuss your first amateur fight? When did it happen? How did it end? Uh... Yeah, so I, again, I only trained for a couple months. I got in there with a guy who had a little bit of boxing and wrestling experience, and uh, it was pretty ugly. I hadn't been training a lot, but you know, I got after it, took him down, put him away pretty early, um, got a little bit of striking on the feet, and I think I finished him with a rear naked choke or some ground and pound. But it was, uh, it, it was cool. It was, it was one of those things where I remember walking in that cage and distinctly hearing that sound of the cage door locking. And I remember that very sound to this day, and I just it gives me goosebumps. I was so excited, and I was so happy to be there, and that just that solidified it. Like clink, like this is actually going to happen. Something I've been looking forward to my entire life. So it was it was a really cool thing. What was your toughest amateur opponent, and why? Toughest amateur opponent. Yes. Um, I have one loss as an amateur, and I I guess I'd have to give it to that guy. Most of my other fights were pretty much a breeze. Um, that fight was one of those fights where, uh, you know, I wasn't really maybe doing what I needed to do in the fight, but what, what made it really tough was my opponent was game and he gave me looks that I wasn't used to somebody there who was, you know, he threw hard, he was ready to scrap and, uh, he just wasn't, he was game. He was game in a way. Most of my opponents were kind of afraid and they folded and that, uh, you know, it, it made it for more of a battle and then you know, I got caught and lost, obviously, which which obviously can be maybe put as more of a technical mistake on my point, but it wouldn't have been exposed if he wasn't so game and, and tough and ready. So it was good to have a, a guy come in there and check me and uh, make sure I'm crossing every team down every eye. What professional debut? Was it a big step up for you? I mean, uh, mentally, were you very much nervous or were you like, okay, this is just a normal fighting day? It was very different. So where I came up in my region uh, for amateur MMA, it was three round fights and you get a minute and a half in between and you're not allowed to head kick. You're not allowed to knee. You're not allowed to elbow. A lot of submissions are illegal. So when I got allowed to fight with a full toolbox as a professional, I was excited. I was really happy, maybe too excited to throw those elbows. My elbows were swollen for a week just from cracking that guy. But um, I was I was more excited than anything. I don't think I was that afraid. Um, yeah, I feel like it was a long time coming, and I was ready for it. Also, my wife was uh, pregnant at the time. I think she gave birth maybe 10 days after that fight. So it was uh, there was a little bit of pressure, like, hey, if this is something we're going to do, we better put a stamp on it right now that this is my career and we're going to start on a good note. I think that we might be in a different place right now if I <laughs> you know, had lost that fight. <laughs> my, my family might have had me give a good a deep look inside and see what my path was. But I think I rose to the occasion and I, I showed this is what I'm here to do. And in your second fight, you also won, right? Uh, yes, sir. I won that second fight. I think it was on Mother's Day. I fought a guy who's a glory kickboxing vet. I uh, came in with a, a dislocated rib, but thankfully nobody had to find out. <laughs> got in there, got after it. I think I put him away with the TKO. You only have one professional loss. So uh, was it a very tough fight? Was it, you know... It could have gone either way, or I th well, I think it definitely could have gone either way. It was a split decision. Uh, I thought at the end I had won. Uh, my corner said I won the second. I think he won the first, and then the third I I definitely won. But the second round was was close, and um, it, it was definitely tough. I think it was one of those fights where, you know, people always think like a fighter being good or bad, but I think it's it's not even just a linear progression. There are certain skills you develop at certain times. And at that time, I had skills that were really developed in elite already. And I had some skills that, you know, had, I had hardly touched. And in that fight, it really made me uh, aware of some of those skills that I had kind of been pushing to the side and, and didn't think were important. And he exposed those holes in my game. So um, I think I would have probably gotten to him eventually and fixed that and maybe not have it take a loss. But, you know, 
silver lining is that, you know, I got to it earlier and I became a more complete fighter ahead of time. So, you know, it was, it was tough. He was game. He moved well. He's a great striker, um, great athlete, great. Ra- I mean, he, he was he was good across the board and um, he challenged me to uh, to improve for sure. So I'm not squeaking out any close decisions anymore. I'm either putting them away or making it so there's no doubt who the winner is. How did you secure head and arm choke versus Trey Singleton? Oh, um, honestly, I think uh, I was cracking him some heavy kicks. I dropped him with a head kick. And uh, he was actually uh, another guy who had an extensive kickboxing record. And after cracking him a couple times on the feet and hurting him, he wanted to wrestle with me, surprisingly. So I uh, put him down and in a transition. I cinched that up. I think he tried to roll for a leg lock and just put it around. And at that point, I think he was pretty rocked. So it was, it was easy to put away. What are your thoughts on, uh, I mean, when you fight for three rounds, for example, professional, amateur, when you go professionally for three rounds, how hard is uh, round three compared to round one? Um, it's, it's definitely tough. I think a lot of it depends on how long camp is because training to be in, Peak fight condition all the time is tough. You know, you want to take time to work on your strength, work on techniques, work on certain things as opposed to fight shape. And I think a lot of it also depends on the opponent. So I've had sometimes when I fight the guy's game, the first round's harder than the third after you break the guy. And if the guy is, uh, you know, somebody who's in fantastic shape and is playing defense the whole time, is weathering out your storm, the third round can be harder. So it, it varies a little bit. I hope that answers your question. So you want to say, for example, when the opponent is swarming up in round one, then round three shouldn't be that hard, right? Yeah, should be. <laughs> yeah, I understand. All right, uh, what can you say about the fight against Mike Powell? Mike Powell? Yep. Um, that was a fun fight. He was a really dangerous grappler, um, really dynamic, pretty uh, deceptively athletic, especially off his back. I know it's national champion wrestlers before um it was a fun fight but uh that was that was a fight where i think it was uh, the the victory for me was being disciplined and handling him and being able to control him and prove that you know i'm, I'm very difficult to submit and difficult to out grapple uh he kind of played a fight which was more defensive i think early on i got really high up in the scorecards and started to shut down a lot of his passive victory. And he just started to, I think, well, and I also broke his jaw in the fight. I'm not sure when, but I think he started to play a little more defensively, like he didn't want to get finished. So it made it harder for me to put him away. But the, the fight was a breeze. I think it was a pretty easy, fun fight, uh, especially as we went down the stretch. That's one of those fights that was easy in the third. What was your game plan for your uh, last fight? My last fight? Yes. Um, well, I knew my guy, Lance Lawrence, was a tough guy. He's, you know, never been finished, and he has 100% finishing rate. So, honestly, our goal was to go in there and prove to him that uh, we could put him away and we could finish him. And uh, right away, I think it was admitted into the fight, I broke my hand on the guy's head. He's got a <laughs> – he's hard to finish for a reason. That guy's got a, a head made out of stone. So, I had to make some adjustments. But, uh, you know, we wanted to shut him down everywhere, and I think we did just that. Obviously, looking – Looking forward, if we had to run it again, we would have maybe diversified some of my finishing options that we were practicing for the fight. Um, a lot of them relied on having a hand. But you live and you learn, and now we know, I know that for next time. Well, about the future, do you have some, uh, some uh, I don't know, some setup plans, or you are like, we're still waiting, it's pandemic, it's COVID. Do you have some plans for the future, or? Absolutely. So I just signed with a new uh, management company, Iridium, who has been fantastic about getting guys into the UFC. Uh, they put a ton of guys in there. So I'm hoping uh, they're able to use their connections and and did my you know career to this point as leverage to to get me into the big show. I'd like to fight as soon as my hand's healthy um, and I can hit somebody without a shattering into pieces. I want to uh, test that hand on some guys in the UFC. I hope. So we'll see what the future has in store, but. This spring, I plan to, early this spring, get in there and uh, get my hands dirty for another another fight. How's your hand right now? Great. It's moving okay. A little sticky. Still doesn't move all the way I need, but uh, they put a plate in there and just got to wait for the, the bone to completely fuse together. So we're getting close. Just a few more weeks, I hope. 
basically you can now shadow box you can train your other hand and that's basically it you can't still strike right you can't well i've been throwing elbows i've been doing a lot of striking stuff just you know with with partners i trust i've got good guys in the gym like josh Brackett. i was talking about before we were doing some flow stuff just uh just a couple of days ago we're we're doing light like flow sparring but i'm just i don't even have a glove on this hand i'm not even punching with it i'm being very careful so uh we're, we're getting the work in we're doing what we can it will be fun for sure. I just hope it heals uh, ASAP and uh, hope to see you in the great show. Would you like to add something to the interview or to give a shout to someone, to give a shout out to someone? Shout out to somebody? Um, well, you know, I always have a great team of sponsors behind me. This is a, a tough journey on the regional scene. Before you get in the UFC, it's, it's tough. You know, you got to juggle a lot of different things to, uh, to make this work. So I'm really fortunate to have sponsors like uh, Dr. Graham Clements, Tora BJJ, uh, Vo Stone. I've got a, a great support team behind me and a great family behind me and a great team. Um, you know, we're, we're just making our way, and uh, I think it's about to pay off in a big way. And I'm really, really looking forward to a lot of these new opportunities um, with these doors open, with signing with Iridium and putting my career in this place. I think uh, with a lot of guys kind of plateau early, they get good and then they kind of hit their peak. I think I haven't even gotten close. I think once more and more of these resources become available to me, I'm just going to accelerate and get better and better. So I'm excited for the future, to be honest. I think I've got a lot of great things ahead of me. So I'm excited to see what happens. All right. Thank you so much for the interview. As I have, uh, as I have a lot of right now scheduled, I will publish this on Friday. Does it work for you? That's fantastic. Thank you. I really okay. appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being my guest. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye.